I'm an expert of uh, Teardown for the Wendell Angleterman SF60 Ritter Analyzer. So we have here the back planes for all the electronics. As you can see, uh, double sided circuit boards, it seems, with either connectors and uh, it is all and insulating a layer at the back and this uh, steel mounting pieces with here brass parts fitted to for the it was a screws attaching the boards at the back here so this will be good for the recycling because of supposed amount of gold in the connectors and still more screws to retrieve as you can see so I will do this one quickly real quick special here seems it is now maybe four layers to this PCB yes must be a four layer one and here you have the, the other ones on the flat cables which cannot disconnect easily but there is still something you can do for to Ali. With these things, it is to try out the cover here. So normally, if you do so, so they are very brittle material and Usually you cannot save them, when you undo them, they will break. And then you can just pull like so and clean all the cables. And here we have a coax with a big uh, connector, screw on connector on this side. And on this side it is uh, directly connected, uh, soldered to the board. On all these connectors. Okay, next part for today is guess what? Yes, the motherboard. So it is the main computer side to the device. Here, where the uh, bad uh, uh, accumulators, and when I did remove my accumulators, actually, one of the uh, Terminals did just break. It is how bad it is. Look at this here. So we have a very expensive here uh, DB connector by Infinol, and it is a shielded one as you can see. There is actually metal inside. Centronics plug here for GPIB, I believe some uh, configuration switches and problems here for the firmware and seems we have here uh, add-on board with uh, uh, memory option there is already quite a lot of memory here old school uh, neck chips but here they did add this module and it is actually fun because if I unscrew it look at what we have it is connected here onto this unpopulated memory sockets right uh, well we actually have the uh, memory addresses written here it looks like 
on ZDDOs, uh, both sides of a socket, uh, half a side of a socket here, to connect this expansion board and also this socket here going here. And here more modern uh, memory chips, surface mount ones. I am wondering if of the dead codes, no, they are the same. Time frame, 1953, 1993, uh, excuse me. Okay, apart from this, we have mostly, uh, probably, communications interface here. And this might be the main processor. Intel 8186. Copyright, wow, it is really an old boy, guys. Copyright 7882. So this is a keeper. If I can undo it with no damage. Really, was not expecting to find a such an old ship. Look at this. Yes, it is what we want. Very nice. So this is a collector one. Onto this socket. A really, really nice thing. Apart from this, nothing particular in here. It is a clean board, we have no budge wires, as far as I can see. Uh, I can see. No, not any one. So the only bad thing is this uh, oxidation here because of the bad um, uh, accumulators, really. But uh, this is probably a very expensive connector by Ophenol. Ok, now we will have a look at the uh, front panel. So, about this front panel. Uh, as you can see, we have a display unit. And it is a sandwich of uh, two PCBs. The display is probably a regular one with a very, very uh, poor reliability uh, flood flex here. Uh, CCFL backlight, of course, and ETLC driver chips. Nothing particular. I put this aside. So we have this uh, shielding behind the display, and we have the keys. If you can see here, we have actually an uh, extension that clicks over the key and you can uh, stack them together to reach the proper height. It is quite nice, but really hard to reinstall. We have uh, status LEDs here with uh, Standoffs and spacers, quite a little bit uh, oil green. Very long LEDs, by the way. A rotary encoder here. So I will zoom a little bit later, but for now I will first do this uh, PCB. We have a buzzer here. So this PCB is actually the yes the display control. So we have an EPROM. Big Intel N80C188XL12 here. 
uh, coding switch is here, some kind of a temperature sensor here, and any problem, probably with all the fonts and uh, what you need to display on the screen. Nothing else on this side. And it allows me now to undo the shielding. And probably reveal more ICs. Here is what we have on the other side. So probably the uh, user interface done with all this. Pretty huge uh, clips here by the way. And this area is just uh, the buttons mostly. Big inductor here for some reason. On the buttons everywhere. Okay, I zoom again for you on the other board if you want to see the clip numbers. So, that is done for this part. A uh, lot of uh, I do not know if I will keep these parts, uh, this thing or not. Not sure. This rotary encoder probably I will keep this because it is, seems to be a nice one. I will save the LEDs, save anything with uh, copper, of course. And apart from this, it will go to the recycling. So, Thanks for watching for today and uh, in the next video we will start digging into the big shielded modules. Thanks for watching, bye bye.